Hey, 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 this is Matthew Harvey here with a 12 o'clock siren recording live at the 903 Broadband Studios on Cowboy Corner on the southeast side of the downtown Leonard Square. On my left hand is James Texas Duels Hartley. Oh, where'd that one come from? It's a good one. I think it's relevant. Is it? Is it relevant? I think so. I think so. Uh, How are you doing? I'm good. Yourself? All right. Welcome, welcome. If yeah. you're joining us now, you're either uh, skipping to the second portion or you just listened to the Hunting of Bob Lee. Right. Which is uh, the setup for our first or only guest on this topic. Um, there's the end of Dallas. Yeah. Um, Got a we, little longer than I remember. It, it was long. Yeah. Uh, we have a local historian and businessman, Ronnie Atnip, with us. How are you doing, Ronnie? I am, thank you. Well, appreciate you coming in. Thank Matthew, you very what's, much. He, what's he here to talk about? We, Ronnie is a, he's a local historian, and specifically in the realm of Bob Lee, who was involved in the Lee-Peacock feud uh, that is uh, famous around here uh, as a Texas uh, feud. Did I say duel? You did, duels. Oh, man, I meant feud. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I, I, t- I totally I got off that. Uh, but anyway, uh, Ronnie knows all about the uh, the Bob Lee portion for sure and a lot about the Lee Peacock feud itself. Um, so he's here to discuss some of that. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's interesting before we get into it because, um, you know, this is a little part of Northeast Texas. You know, not much goes on here, but uh, this is a, a, a chance for us to really touch history. And yeah. it's a, a it's a definitely a connection to a to a, a past event that had some significance, you know. So. Ronnie's dedicated a lot of years to uh, looking into research and finding uh, all the truths you can find about the the whole uh, feud, and uh, we're interested to get into it. So, to kick it off, Ronnie, um, introduce yourself if you like, real quick. You haven't you haven't got to put a word in yet. <laughs> okay, thank you. We jabber sometimes. Sorry. That's all right. Well, I'm glad to come here. I, I This information means a lot to me, so I do want to get it out. Sure. And I uh, hope I do a good enough job you guys can use it. Oh, I, yeah. I, I think it'll do great. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, I've uh, uh, been interested in that feud ever since uh, Gladys Ray wrote her book back in 1957. Uh, I bought one of the original books, went down to... Uh, Saunders bookstore there in Bonham and Betsy Saunders was a friend of her had her over and she was signing books and I bought one of them didn't have enough sense to know that I needed to get her to sign it, uh, mm. sign it to me she yeah. just I just bought one out of the stack that she was uh, 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 signing and went on but sure. any, anyway I was glad to get it and uh, which book was that uh, murder at the corner murder at the corners I've got it at the house I haven't read it yet so. well it's uh it's a short little read, but you'll you'll enjoy it. Sure. Yeah. She was a white right teacher. Uh huh. From what I understand. Matthew Research Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nineteen fifty seven. There you go. Yeah. Uh well it was uh probably not fifty seven, fifty eight or nine, something like that that I'd bought it. Betsy had been selling those books right and left and uh Sure. Uh, but I don't think it was right at the published date. May have been. I don't. Know. Did that book kind of get it popular again in the yeah in the it, area? It got it kicked around, and then I uh, later met uh, you know two or three different people that had not, uh, some knowledge of it or, or quite a bit, and uh, uh, so that's where I uh, garnered my interest. I guess you'd say. But, uh, so, so you read the book, got interested in it. What, what got you into doing some research and finding out more, um, meeting up with people with like interests? Well, my, I have always been interested in history and local history more so than, uh, state or national or whatever. Sure. But, but uh, I, uh, have always liked the, uh, civil war and wild west, uh, type stuff and uh uh so i just uh started pecking around looking for things you know anytime i saw anything or uh i'd get it you know like uh after that book came out well then there's several people had written articles about it and uh, things like that and i'd always clip them out and keep them and hmm. that type thing so bob lee 
is uh, from these parts, right? I guess we'll just turn it over to you and, and yeah, let you uh, let you start. I, you you've been talking about how maybe there was uh, there's really kind of three distinct chapters to this this whole story, three sides to the feud. Uh, yeah, well, uh, there, uh, nobody, and I mean nobody, has ever looked into Bob Lee's military history. Mm. What I'm going to tell y'all, nobody's got. They've got parts of it because I've done a little Facebook post and put them in there when I found them. But, sure. But this will be the first time they were ever put together and uh, uh, cited to the public, you know. And uh, it means a lot to me, but it was just because I was such, so interested. I had, uh, uh, well, all my ancestors were Confederate soldiers, and uh, except for one, and I forgive him, uh, especially after <laughs> what he, he helped raise my granddad and my great uncle, Ransom Cipher. He was uh, t- wound up being a uh, Yankee. Uh, uh, cavalryman, uh, but he went down to join the Confederate Confederacy, went to the recruiter, and so they started to take his information. They said, how old are you? He said, 16. They said, well, we just can't use you. Well, he got ticked off and left, and he walked down the street, and this is the story he told my grandfather and my uh, great-great-uncle, great-uncle, and uh, he went down the street to a union uh recruiter and i don't think he cared which side he is on he just wanted in it you right. know and, yeah. uh, it's kind of like <laughs> didn't want to miss the great adventure kind yeah, of thing. that yeah. uh uh all the uh oh where the, um, ireland where, where they get all these great boxers you know they yeah. say one one of them was walking down the street one day and there's a big fight going on he said is this private or can anybody get in you know yeah. and, <laughs> and i think my Grandfather Cipher was one of those. But anyway, uh, uh, he uh, told my grandfather that uh, he uh, uh, went to the uh, union uh, recruiter, and yes, they signed him up. They waited till his birthday passed and then inducted him. And uh, I thought, well, that's something. And and I happened to think about that many, many, many years later, and I got to looking at his history, and sure enough, he was uh, 16 years old. He turned 17, and then within a few days was a uh, Union soldier. And so the actual facts fit what my granddad had told me he said. Wow. And uh, But anyway, he was always mad at... Uh, Johnny Rib, they he called him sure. for, for doing him that way. Mm. But anyway, that's got nothing to do with Bob Lee, just my interest in the subject. And then I had a great great grandmother used to try to tell me about uh, standing on the front porch and uh, uh, watching a Civil War battle that uh, her father, uh, uh, my third great grandfather, Bolar Matlock, was in. And then she, her, uh, father-in-law and and a husband-to-be was in that battle too which she didn't know at the time but anyway i i didn't uh i didn't know you're supposed to listen to old folks like that you know they just spit snuff in a can back in those days and <laughs> you know you got plenty of that and, and so you you'd rather climb on top of the house or something than to uh, listen to them but she told about uh, her dad taking a pick, uh, pickaxe and digging back in the bank of a creek and cut some brush and piled in front of it and ha- had the uh, uh, one edge of it loose and uh, tied a rope to the uh, uh, trunks of all that brush. And when he left for the war, said, anytime Yankees are in the neighborhood, run in there and pull that too. And they always kept food and water in there. And she said, we used it several times mm. to pull that in because uh, they were pretty bad about burning out houses and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, Bob Lee didn't do that. Uh, well. But uh, uh, it's things like that that got me interested in the uh, uh, Civil War. And then I, I find out that uh, old Ransom Cipher's uh, daughter, <laughs> my... my uh, Great grandmother married uh, uh, 
W.A. Carlton's son, who was my great-great-grandfather that was a uh, cavalryman in the uh, Confederate Army. Army. So uh, anyway, uh, it had my attention. Yeah. Sure. And uh, But anyway, I was, Bob Lee has been criticized severely for being a, uh, a coward and uh, uh, a deserter and uh, uh, wasn't there for the war. He hid and laid in the brush and all that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, people would say, and then they'd say, well, he claimed he was a captain, but, you know, his met, his uh, military record only shows that he was a sergeant, you know, so they'd, they'd throw that up. And I just got tired of hearing that stuff, so I looked it up. I started doing a little research on him. First thing I did was order his military records, and, and uh, I uh, found out that he was uh, uh, born September the seventeenth, eighteen thirty-four, in uh, Carroll County, Arkansas, to Daniel Webster Lee and Polly Davis. Now, can I ask a question real quick? Sure. Uh, when you ordered his military records, is that like a Freedom of Information request, or is it just a you know, just you just go through a process and they turn them over to you. Yeah, they, gotcha. yeah. There's nothing to it. it. They'll just send them right in. Oh, okay. Sorry, but, but uh, anyway, uh, I ordered those and looked through them. Didn't know what I was looking at, uh, but understood a little bit of it, you know. And uh, but in any event, his uh, uh, he was born in Arkansas, and then. They moved to Lamar County, Texas, just east of Honey Grove. Yes, sir. And uh, there his mother, Polly Davis, uh, got uh, sick and died. And Daniel Webster Lee, his father, wound up marrying uh, Elizabeth, this lady that was the daughter of the uh, landlord that they were renting a farm and a home from. And she had stayed in the house uh, and took care of... uh, uh, Polly Davis until she died, and uh, so mm-hmm. anyway, it, uh, I mean, you know, things you, took a turn. Well, it came <laughs> convenient, man. Yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we didn't have TV, right? And, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, Bob enlisted uh, in uh, Grayson County, Texas, for one year uh, in the uh, Ninth Texas Cavalry. He was in uh, Company C. Three of his brothers uh, joined the same day with him. A bunch of his neighbors' uh, friends all joined that same day. And uh, he was uh, 27 years old. And I noticed on his record, uh, first thing I noticed was that he was a farrier. And and uh, most of them just says private or whatever, you know, they enlisted as. But he, was a, he went in as a private and his other other subsequent uh, cards are listed private but uh, i got to think well yeah that uh, that'd be pretty good he he should be a farrier they had a uh, blacksmith uh shop at home they worked on their own farm equipment and then they uh, uh worked on equipment for neighbors that uh, needed it done and sh- and shod horses and such and of course his uh father was running uh, lee station which which uh, uh, was a post office, and uh, it was a stage coach stop, a stage station. Now, where's that at? It's uh, all right, just just barely in Hunt County. It's uh, just over the county line from uh, where uh, Daniel so Lee lived. Part of his near Lee Cemetery out here. Oh yeah. Okay. You, you get at the cemetery and go east, cross yep. the fir- cross Lee Creek. And it's yep. right there on the right hand side. Okay. Mm. Uh, that's, now, now, you said he signed up with his two, three brothers. Yeah. What was the mood in the in the area at the time that you would sign up three brothers at the same time? Was well, it just everybody was. It was just rounds of people signing up, or y- yes. Um. Uh, uh, they were all volunteers. Confederate Army was all volunteers to begin right. with, and then they tried a, a conscription act. But uh, those people signed up. Uh, they signed up. 
Well, I don't know how to how to put this. Really, I, I mean, the general consensus is you're supposed to say that they signed up to enforce uh, and ensure that slavery was carried on. I don't know of a one of them that ever did that. I mean, right. uh, you can just say how many people thinks that uh, two million men lined up and killed seven hundred and fifty thousand plus one hundred and fifty thousand uh, slaves and civilians in order to keep the slaves. Uh, uh, in slavery, and uh, how many people really believe that? I don't see many hands go up. Sure, you know they say, "Well, you you didn't consider this, and you didn't consider that." Yeah, but there's a lot they didn't consider. These people, uh, like the, the old saying was, uh, "Why are you fighting?" Is what they'd ask Johnny Reb, and he'd say, "Because you're down here." Right. I mean, they came down here and burnt the South. Well, that's the whole war of northern aggression, right? I mean, yeah, the yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. They they. Uh, Kill civilians, uh, burn out everything they had, and uh, they never did get in Texas. They tried uh, a couple of times. My ancestors kept them out. Uh, I had uh, ancestors that whipped them out of Galveston after they took it. And then the uh, Red River campaign, I had them that fought the south half going north and those that fought the north half coming south. Mm. And uh, the Matlocks and Dewoodies was up in the north part, and the Carltons and uh, Mackenzie's was in the southern part. But uh, in any... So the Lees probably just got to the point where they got fed up maybe and decided it it was time? Yeah, it was time to go. Yeah. And... Everybody was at some point or another. It was their maybe time? Right, right. It was time to go. And uh, uh, I read a a letter uh, the other day from... uh, uh, father that he wrote to his son about how proud he was for signing up and going to the war that mm. that it uh, people might not understand him being proud that his son was going into that but it's what he was uh, fighting for that uh, their homes their wives their family uh, and uh, anyway it was just really a touching touching letter mm. but uh, Bob Bob signed up at camp Reeves in Grayson County, Texas, and like I say, he signed up for one year as a farrier, and he was 27 years old at the time. Are any of these camps and stuff still around? Uh, no. Or monuments? Or well, there'll be... Uh, historical marker or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll, there'll be something like that. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, in any event, once they got through training, well, uh, they were to... Uh, go north into Arkansas and uh, 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 support uh, Benjamin McCullough up there. Uh, Benjamin uh, McCullough uh, and his brother Henry McCullough, both generals, and uh, they uh, uh, well, one of them, one of them uh, Henry McCullough, was uh, in charge of the North Texas sub-district uh, during the Civil War, and he was stationed in Bonham. Well, uh, they both fought at San Jacinto, and uh, uh, one guy that fought with them, uh, Alfred uh, Johnson, uh, Ben McCullough contacted him and asked him to, to uh, build a, a spy company and come to work for him. He was from... Uh, Hunt County, or Collin, I believe it was. Anyway, Alf Johnson. And uh, anyway, they were all Davy Crockett's friends, and they were all... Uh, That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm uh, glad we got some Davy Crockett friends on the on the <laughs> yeah. podcast. That's Do cool. you really? Well, I mean, yeah. that's awesome that you're talking about that. <laughs> well, I can tell you some... Let's do one on his rifle. <laughs> okay. <I'll do> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm all ears. Uh, but anyway... Uh, they were uh, uh, all buddies that fought at San Jacinto. And uh, so when the different units left Camp Reeves, they went over from Fort uh, Douglas over in uh, Oklahoma and headed north. And it was the 3rd, the 6th, the 9th, and the 27th Cavalry were all going to Arkansas to help Ben McCullough. And uh, uh, on the way up, uh, between there and Fort Smith, they ran into a bunch of Indians. The uh, uh, all the uh, 
Muskogees, okay. the creeks, they were uh, uh, split as to whether they were Confederates or Yanks. And so uh, the uh, the ones that decided they were Yankees uh, and uh, told the uh, uh, Confederacy where uh, where to go uh, started uh, north northeast headed for Kansas north northwest headed for Kansas and I think they were the Penn Indians but uh, in any event. Uh, these units, part of the ninth, went after them, and uh, but Bob Lee was not in that part. He stayed with the rest of them, moving slow towards Fort Smith, Arkansas, and uh, the uh, Indians. I, they had like three battles with them, something like that. I mean, it, it's it's sad to say that the Indians just decided we're going to split, and y'all can. Uh, kiss my petunia and right. then all of a sudden they all gang up and go shoot them you know right. it's a terrible thing but it, that's what happened and uh, in the winter it wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't good at all but they did finally wind up getting into uh, uh, Arkansas and uh, the, they were under uh, Major General uh, Earl Van Dorn and uh, there at Pea Ridge, and uh, it was uh, South Lost Pea Ridge. It was just a big mess uh, to begin with. Uh, it started out uh, with the Ninth Army in a charge, uh, letting out rebel yells and uh, Cherokee war hoops mm. and cannons going off all at once. I mean, Jeez. scared the hell out of me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And can I say that? Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure can. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, with all that going on, uh, McCullough didn't have a general's uh, uniform. He had a black velvet uh, suit made, and he called it his fighting suit. So he goes in, <laughs> he got this shiny black velvet suit on, on a horse with a sword in the air, hollering and screaming, leading a whole bunch of uh, soldiers. Well, he was just too pretty not to shoot, you know. <laughs> so they killed him. Yeah. And uh, then uh, the other uh, commander there uh, was Mac McIntosh, and, uh, General McIntosh, and... Uh, he was killed. Well, after the the first two head men, the third man in charge was uh, uh, McCullough's infantry commander. Nobody told him that that uh, McIntosh had also been killed. He did not know he was in charge, and so they just sat there. Well, you're sitting there, everybody's shooting at you, and you don't know, you know, you don't know whether a left flank or charge or head on or what. And uh, so they just sat there, and he was captured. And so Van Dorn's uh, right wing was all they had to fight. Uh, they stopped them and, of course, lost the battle. And so P. Ridge went to the Yanks. Hmm. And, uh, uh, but, uh, Getting back to Bob Lee, he was in that battle. But uh, on uh, he 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 was uh, appointed a second sergeant, and he was sent back to Texas uh, with uh, a bunch of guys to bring the horses. They hated Van Dorn. He 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 dismounted them. They were a cavalry, and he couldn't just say you're no longer cavalry, but they were dismounted cavalry, and so they had to take the horses back. Well, Bob Lee, and I think probably because he was a farrier there, or maybe uh, they trusted him for some reason, that was considered a scout. But uh, it took them out of action for eight months. They Jeez. came back here with their horses for eight months, and uh, uh, they were two recruit all the men they could and to find all the extra horses they could and go back. Sure. So just the time it took to 
get here and get back and do all those other ancillary stuff it was eight months. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it, uh, Van Dorn had to get whipped a couple of more times before s- somebody removed him and they, sure. uh, ordered the horses back. And, uh, these guys uh, were all mad to begin with. They didn't sign up to be infantry. They signed up to be cavalry and ride horses. Sure. And, uh, uh, but during that time that, that they were in, before they called them back, well, Bob goes back up here to Camp Reeves, and uh, he he uh, re-ups. You know, he was only in for a year, and uh, he uh, signed up for three more years or the war, ever, which came first. And uh, so uh, that, that uh, uh, pretty well got him in the thick of it. He was no coward. He wouldn't have done that. Sure. You know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, but then December the 8th, 1862, Captain Thomas Berry, who was in charge of this scout that led the horses off, uh, came back into the camp with a column of, uh, mounted men, uh, with each leading four saddled horses. Bob was one of those men. So they were thrilled to death to be remounted up, up mm. over there and, uh, when they got their horses back. Uh, that was December the 8th. Well, uh, the month had three more weeks in it. And, and uh, uh, so sometime during those last three weeks of December of 1862, Bob was arrested. It didn't say what he did. And uh, uh, it just said that he was arrested. And the only thing that I can uh, uh Attribute that to, or, or, or I, I guess, I guess I'm just suspecting this, but uh, it was passed down through his uh, Bob's family. One of the stories that was passed down was is that he was in Louisiana trying to sell a string of horses, and he went in a dance hall and killed two Union officers in there. Well, here he is in Louisiana with a string of horses. Mm. And I'm just wondering if this was not, if that's the reason he didn't get arrested. They, they were told to keep quiet and in the sidelines of everything and all that. Bob, uh, well, one of the uh, men that wrote an article on him called him a hot shot. Mm. <laughs> so we got hot shot Bob, and uh, uh, from what the family told me, Red Smith, uh, I often wondered, was that when he got in trouble? Did did he call their attention, the union attention to them being there by going in a dance hall, acting like he was selling that string of horses he had out front, and and kill two union officers and then get get the heck out? I, right. I've often wondered if that's what played out. I don't know. Nobody does. But uh, anyway, you know, you get a. Uh, now, where are you catching these stories from? Red and, Smith told me that one. Okay. Uh, nephew. Great so these are word of mouth. Yeah. Okay. Oral tradition. Yeah. 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 Family's oral tradition. Yeah. And that stuff. That stuff is uh, pretty good. Sure. It's uh, sometimes a lot better than uh, newspapers. <laughs> yeah. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't doubt that. But that's at all. what we're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whoever wrote, the, uh, you know, was it a union paper or? A, uh, confederate paper yeah and, i mean it's colored uh, by leanings, bias. Yeah. you know and uh uh you know you watch a news program and uh, one of their reporters is uh uh left one of them's right believing and uh, it's you know you, don't, you can see it you know yeah so. yeah it takes a while sure, <laughs> for yeah. me i'm a little slow <laughs> 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 but anyway i i've often wondered if that wasn't the reason that uh uh he uh, had gotten arrested, but he went on the Holly Springs raid, and Thompson Station at March in 63. And, uh, but then uh, uh, he was uh, detailed as a scout September the 1st, 1863. Well, uh, I don't know which scout he went to. I don't know why. I mean, they don't tell you uh what scout that he was sent to, but whatever it was, he must have uh, acquitted himself 
uh, pretty well. I just think back to the guy that called him a hot shot. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I think I think he he was supposedly fearless and and just got right in it. Right. And uh, uh, but in any event, it was uh, wasn't but about uh, five months uh, after he was arrested. Well, uh, Captain uh, Perry Evans. For company from Company I uh, of the Texas uh, Ninth Texas Cavalry uh, is appointed a scout, and he's told to pick his own men and officers. Well, he picked his men from the Ninth Texas. His men, I read an article that one of them wrote from uh, uh, that was in ca- uh, Company I that did not get selected, and uh, come to find out, the men were uh, all disappointed that the cap did not just take them all you know y- right. y'all are my unit and let's go but he didn't he picked uh, a lot of them but he picked one from here and one from there and uh, mo- a lot of them was out of his bunch but then he he goes uh, out of, out of his uh, in within the same army but out of his company and selects bob lee and uh, so bob lee is in uh, perry scouts and uh, perry evans scouts and uh, so they uh, were given pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good charge. They they were to be uh, uh, more more or less the uh, provost, or they were the provost for for uh, Red Jackson's uh, cavalry. Uh, they were the military police, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, and they had. Uh, if they deemed it the most summary uh, uh, punishment, I mean, they could they could kill you if they thought they needed to. Right. If they had to get out of somewhere and not uh, not leave you, I mean, just kill them. I mean, that's what they did. But uh, anyway, they were also charged with uh, uh, bandits uh, and uh, people that. Uh, uh, fled the army uh, and north and south, and uh, was uh, lawless lawless types that were all over the uh, countryside there, uh, mistreating the civilians. Uh, they were to protect the civilians and stop. Almost the like a home guard or something, kind of right. Yes, it was. It was. It, except that they were a scout. They uh, they had uh. uh Anything they could think of that needed doing in along those lines, they did them. Right. Unless their general had them specifically doing something else. Sure. Sure. And uh, so, uh, what they did, they they had fought in uh, Tennessee, and then and uh, they came back to help break the siege uh, there at Vicksburg, and uh, then uh, Vicksburg uh, surrendered before. They could have done much, and there wasn't enough of them to just cavalry sure. in. It wasn't enough to to have uh, liberated them all, but they were harassing them from the outside and uh, just going in, making buzz attacks, just zooming in, zooming out, sure. doing anything they could. And uh, so uh, Bob Lee uh, was uh, given a squad. I mean, those those things broke down. You you have a hundred men in a company, and you got a, a, a captain and a first lieutenant, a second lieutenant, and a third lieutenant, and then you got sergeants and corporals and all those people. You know, they say, uh, Sergeant so and so over here, take your squad, and and everybody knew who his squad was. Sure. But uh, and and then there was uh, it, it may include. Uh, uh, a, cor- a corporal's squad too, but if they'd asked that corporal squad to do something, they just automatically broke off. They didn't. They didn't have any time to stand around and say, "No, you're in that. You're in this." They just went. Right. And uh, but uh, what they did, uh, he was in. Uh, uh, Bob was in uh, Company I uh, of the Ninth Texas Cavalry, detailed as a scout, and uh, and. Uh, Perry Evans, like I say, some of his men thought that uh, they all ought to have gone, but uh, they didn't. He he chose some of them out. Bob Lee was one of those, uh, and his men were all fearless, uh, superior soldiers. 
I, I, like I say, I couldn't find what original scout unit Bob Lee went out in, but I think he pretty well uh, acquitted himself real well is the reason uh, Perry Evans uh, selected him. Sure. Yes. But then on uh, 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 one, uh, Bob Lee goes in with Captain Perry Evans. That, that unit is set up June the 3rd, 1864, I mean, June the 10th, and by June the 13th, they're sent on a mission uh, uh, to go up the Mississippi, and they go as, they're go. they following uh, uh, 23 boats that's got 8,000 to 10,000 troops on it, and they're going to the uh, reinforce General Sherman. And uh, they had harassed them, you know, just from the shore. You just, every now and then, somebody would, Try, shots. try to pop one of yeah. them, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> jack with them a little bit. But anyway, uh, they did that all the way up to the mouth of the White River. And uh, when they got there, then there was a force of uh, three to 400 strong that landed at uh, Greenville, Mississippi. And then they rode on to Indian Bayou. And uh, in, in uh, Captain Perry Evans' uh, scouts, he, he says, uh, my men fought them at every point where an opportunity offered. So he, he was pretty proud of the men that he had. They, sure. they, they just got in there and got after them, got in the woods when that bunch marched down there. I, they harassed them pretty good, I think. They weren't a timid lot then. No. <laughs> that's, that's one reason I suspect Bob going in the bar and shooting everybody. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or at least two. Two union right. officers, dance hall, dance hall, we we'll call it. Uh, but anyway, uh, they uh, selected as uh, one of their targets a uh, guy named Milford Coe, C O E. Prior to the war, he he uh, overseed, he called it uh, plantations on the Mississippi side of the Big Muddy and. Uh, uh, and then he joined the 1st Mississippi Cavalry Regiment. Well, at the Battle of uh, Belmont, he proved himself to be a coward. He, he wouldn't fight and deserted, ran off. Well, he just deserted the Confederate Army and went back to overseeing uh, plantations. That's what he'd done most of his life. And uh, the, those uh, overseers were the drivers, uh, kept everybody at work, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Uh, but by 1863, he was uh, on Island 76 with about 50 fugitive slaves and uh, some other renegade white men, and he ran a wood yard. He, he sold wood to the U.S. Uh, boats at exorbitant uh, war prices, so he was doing well. You know, he, he had the jingle coming in, and ever so often... Uh, he, he didn't even need to keep a boat. Everybody bought wood from him or they didn't get wood. Right. Or they didn't buy it there. And he, he'd get uh, a boat to come along that uh, wasn't, wasn't ready uh, hauling something, you know, or whatever. Uh, he'd, he'd get his uh, uh, men together, uh, that, you know. Uh, I don't know how many he would leave to sell wood, but it would be when they had plenty of wood cut up. Sure. And... Uh, He'd get his men together and uh, go to the Mississippi shore, and he'd raid the country, collecting mules, cattle, fugitive slaves, and then he'd sit back and sell all that at his leisure and uh, uh, to boats that came by. And uh, anybody wanted a mule, well, there was a mule yard over there, you know. And <laughs> I can only imagine that. That probably didn't last too long then. I mean, somebody's going to get tired of that eventually. Well, they... They did, except that there was nothing they could or would do about him because the Union controlled that area at the time, right. and he was selling them their wood. And there was uh, two or three uh, uh, plantations there that he would not raid. They had an inn with this uh, uh, commander of those of the gunship uh, that, and the people that could have given him trouble, uh, and they'd go. He'd go up. He'd have this uh, uh, owner of the 
plantation go up and graze their palm and explain to them that he sure is a nice guy and he's keeping yeah. all the wood y'all want. And he's really never bothered us. He is a swell guy, you know. Mm, sure. But then he's uh, overrunning everybody else except right. those three guys. Sounds like politics today. Well, yeah. yeah sounds uh, familiar. I, I, I might go home and turn that on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, he... Uh, uh, had this uh, had this wood yard going, and and so Bob Lee takes his uh, uh, in Perry Evans. He only had five men, and uh, uh, as his uh, uh, squad, and uh, so he sets up uh, to take a, a black guy, a sixteen year old black guy that had joined them out there and put him on the downward side of that island at night, middle of the night. And then the next day, this guy just comes wandering around and wanders up into Cole's uh, bunch there. and uh, You know, he's a fugitive and just got loose and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so he hangs around and works for Cole for a few days and, and uh, till he could... Uh, reconnoitered the whole island and he knew what was there and what to, what to do about it but anyway he gathered all the information that uh, Bob Lee would need to make a raid and uh, so Lee uh, picked this guy up uh, and brought him back to Mississippi and uh, uh, and uh, he spills the beans he draws him a diagram of where Cole and the white guys lived, and uh, and uh, a black guy named Tom that was the overseer of the contraband uh, blacks that were there, sure, stayed with him. And then there was a cabin that was built like a fortress next to it that all their guns were kept in. They didn't he didn't want the guns laying around. He was afraid of his own yeah. crew, crew. He had uh, mm-hmm. you know somebody might get tired of chopping wood. Yeah, and, yep. uh, but anyway. Uh, after they decide how they're going to handle it, uh, they uh, row back out to the island, uh, all of them at one time, in this old flat-bottom uh, Batau, Batu, B-A-T-E-A-U. I think it's a large P-Row. P-Row, mm-hmm. is But uh, anyway, big enough that they used oars. Uh, but... They slipped through the woods just just like the map that this uh, his spy had drawn, and uh, they they uh, go up to Cole's door, kick the door open, and holding a lantern up, and uh, those guys in there looked up at six army coats. I mean that's all they could see, the light of that lantern and six army <laughs> coats sticking in that door, uh, explaining them rules to them yeah. you know and uh so uh what they did they bound and gagged uh most of them and they took them out to a uh area where they'd be easy to guard and uh, it was uh, a big clearing out in the woods you couldn't see them from the water so they made them all sit back to back tied up and uh in a big huddle right in the center of this so it only took two guards with a couple of pistols each to watch them you know and uh, if they and they told them we we can't get caught so y'all make a move we're killing the first one you know yeah and so uh so nobody moved nobody moved <laughs> and and they were tied to where it'd be hard to get up anyway you know with their hands sure. behind their back it'd take a minute or two they, they'd tip their hand that they were fixing to make a run for it sure but anyway, uh, they guarded those men like that until they uh, uh, gathered up everything they could, and uh, uh, they uh, there was a boat, a sutler's boat, came up to the uh, landing at the wood yard, so uh, uh, Bob and. Uh, a couple of his men, you know, they <laughs> they throw on a Yankee overcoat and run down there and hi, how are you? And jump on the boat with them, you know. And within five minutes, they've got that whole boat uh, 
under under their control. Sure. And uh, so th- then they tie up all the settlers. One thing Bob did, though, he made them, uh, I guess he just robbed them. <laughs> he made them pay a large surcharge not to burn the boat. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Call that extortion. <laughs> extortion. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, you might. Oh, I didn't realize he was a criminal. I had him figured as an angel. You know? Right. But, <laughs> anyway, they used that boat to ferry all those prisoners back and forth to the mainland there. And they had some of the uh, Perry's uh, uh, scouts receiving everybody on the on the uh, Mississippi side over there. And, of course, all the mules came back, all the cattle came back, all the horses came back. And uh, while this, uh, while they're doing that, uh, there's four different uh, uh, steamers came by the island, and uh, Bob and his men, just uh, trying to make it look like it was occupied, just being nonchalant, they'd dip their hat with their pistol to them, you know, and stuff like that. And they were within pistol shot of each other. Right. You know, they're just going by the island with the window down. <laughs> and uh, he would just tip his hat to them, you know, as they went by, being friendly. Sure. And, uh, uh, I don't know how long it took them to do it, but they had to make several trips over there to uh, haul everything that they had over there. Uh, that 16-year-old... Uh, uh, black scout that Bob Lee had uh, would later become pretty well known. Uh, his name was Holt Collier, and uh, he was born on and raised by Harold Hines and uh, on the Hines plantation in Hines County there. And, and when uh, Colonel Hines and his son, Tom, who was a year older than and had grown up with Holt, went off to the Army, well, Holt grabbed his shotgun, wanted to go with him. They told him, no, he's too young, you know. And uh, the folks that think that uh, there was a big friction between the blacks and the whites back then don't realize those blacks stayed home and, and took care of everything just like the uh, uh their master was there, and the rest of the right. family was there, and they just took care of everything. Well, Holt was so well known in the whole area, and, and you read that, well, they weren't allowed to even own a gun. Well, they gave him a gun and turned him loose because he loved to hunt, and he brought uh, game back to, had a 12-gauge shotgun, and he brought game back to the uh, uh, households of these different uh, plantations around the one that he actually that his parents were actually the house servants to mm-hmm. the Hineses. Mm-hmm. And so everybody knew him. Everybody loved him. How you doing? Here's your sack of quail, you know. And mm-hmm. he'd ease right on. And the slaves loved him because uh, they'd get a little change. He'd kill a deer, donate the whole deer. Mm-hmm. and uh, 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 Or a black bear. He mm-hmm. loved to kill bear. People like bears, you know. And uh, so anyway, Holt Collier did all this. And he, he was born in 1846, but uh, he uh, spent his uh, the rest of the war. Well, uh, I left out a sentence there. He, he, he was not allowed to go with his uh, master and uh, son that he wanted to go with. So he just stole aboard a steamer and went down the river a little bit, a couple of counties away, and uh, got off and found uh, the Ninth Texas Cavalry. Just wandered in there and said, "I, I want to be with y'all." And uh, they were like, "All right." <laughs> well, they <laughs> what they did, they uh, put him in. Uh, he, he was uh, a lot of those young black guys were uh, uh, camp help. Sure. They cooked and they cleaned and they did all that kind of stuff. And then when they, whenever they had to run or was under fire, no telling what, what those guys would wind up doing. Sure. But uh, at Green River Bridge, Holt Collier went from being a camp servant to a soldier. I don't know what all he did there, except that I found that uh, statement in one of the articles I was I was reading. And he fought in many engagements and uh, served successfully as a military spy. He loved that spying. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could go anywhere. I know? think probably part of being a, uh, as, uh, you know, in many cases they were kind of second class citizens, uh, people don't notice you, you know? Oh, that's right. You know, I mean, whether you, you could talk about the slavery thing from the, from the South or the North perspective, but he, he probably went very unnoticed by both Yankees and rebels and. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and he was good at what he did. Yeah. I mean, he, he was affable. A, people liked him. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Here's your sack of quail. Right. But <laughs> that's he, a quote. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the second but, time we've talked about eating bear too. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, whole health record. He, he killed over 3000 bears in Mississippi. Oh, wow. My goodness. Uh, yes. But anyway, uh, that's why I never see any black bears whenever uh, yeah, I see that black they're, bear they're, sign going through Mississippi. That's it. <laughs> they're still shy. Yeah. 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 You do see there's a, a black bear sign, I think, on was it 20. Yeah, I've seen uh, I've actually seen a bear in Florida. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. In lower Alabama. Uh, but when the war was over, he 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 uh, uh, ran into. Uh, his old uh, master and Tom Hines, Colonel Hines, and uh, he he went back to the uh, plantation with them. He didn't. I mean, the family stayed with them. They mm-hmm. didn't. They weren't. I mean, that happened a lot. They, after they the no war. longer owned them, right? I will say, but uh, there was a lot of closeness in between a lot of blacks and whites. Yeah. They Lord, they raised their kids, and, uh, yeah, and everything. But anyway, he was with Colonel Hines one day, and a Union officer, a uh, young Union officer was uh, showing off, and uh, I don't know how old he was. He's old enough to have, a, by then, a 20 or 22-year-old son, at least one. But anyway, they uh, Hines is pretty scrappy, and uh, so they just got into a bare knuckle brawl right out in the street him and this uh, and this is right after the war and this union officer and so uh he uh knocks this union officer down this old man does well he gets back up and comes for some more of it and so the old man knocks him down again he ain't gonna take that he comes off the ground and comes right back at him the old man knocked him down the third time and the third time he's getting up, he drew a dirk, and Hope Collier just whipped his pistol and killed him mm. right there. And uh, so uh, it was a long, hard-fought battle uh, keeping him out of jail. I mean, you know, the Yankees are in charge of the courts all of a sudden. Yeah. And uh, Black man and, kills a white man. Yeah, and, uh, and and a union officer at that, right. you know, and uh, so it just didn't look good at all. Well, uh, there was uh, uh, two or three lawyers from these other surrounding uh, plantations that hope hold to give them a sack of quail before, you know. <laughs> yeah. And well, uh, he, one of them took his case, and uh, uh, when they showed up uh, for court, well, they. Uh, Arrested Holt was going to throw him in the uh, jail, and uh, the the one that actually had his case said, "No, you're not throwing him in jail. Uh, he's done. He's 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 out on bond. We paid his bond. You you're not throwing him in jail. If you do, you put me a cot right by him, and and they let him go. And uh, so anyway, time you get three or four lawyers uh, stirring the pot. Well, nobody knows what the hell happened. Yeah, right. Know? So. <laughs> Pretty quick, he sure. Sure. <laughs> they let him go. But anyway, uh, after that happened, uh, he had a constable friend, constable friend that knew that he had all the guts in the world, and uh, wanted to, wanted him to help him arrest, uh, uh, you know, some fugitives. He'd give him so much for everyone they arrested him, and uh, sure enough, uh, in in helping that constable, well, Holt wound up killing two of them. Jeez. And, and so here he is. He's got, even though they're outlaws, they've got buddies, you know, and uh, they just come out of that war. And, and uh, he's done kill three white men, and he decided that it was time to go. Well, Sullivan Ross had al- always told him that he said, uh, uh, Come to Texas and cowboy for me. 
And Hope Collier came down to Sol Ross's ranch down here and cowboyed uh, uh, for like a year. Like B. Sol Ross, the namesake yeah, yeah, of the college? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. That was his general, see, for three years. Okay. And wow, uh, the top, the head general. Yeah. And Sol Ross was really a loved person. Mm. And, uh, yeah, uh, and and I don't know what all kind of scouting that uh, Holt was able to do for him, but he liked him well enough that he uh, had always told him, come on down. So he goes on down and uh, Cowboys for a year. I do not know when he went back to Mississippi if he came through up here or not, but all these guys in his company, see, was formed right here in these yeah. three or four counties. Yeah, I don't know if he came by to see them or not. There's no mention of it. Uh -huh. But he did go back to uh, 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 Mississippi, and uh, Major Helm, uh, one, of those, uh, one of those attorneys that had kept him out of jail, uh, set him up to guide. Now, this is after the Civil War. I'm, sure. just, I'm just doing a little play on Holt because mm -hmm. he, he did come to be so well known. But, sure. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, told him if he could keep it real quiet for, for 30 days, uh, Teddy Roosevelt would be there and he was going to be his guide, kill a bear. And uh, so Holt went out and set up a camp, a uh, big camp, you know, and and uh, some little outline camps where they might be a day or two here and there, and, and uh, he, he got it all all fixed up. Uh, Holt was amazed that when Teddy Roosevelt came up on the train car, he said he had 40 uh, detectives with him. And uh, uh, I guess they were the Secret Service. We had a Secret Service by then. Alan Pickerton started that for Lincoln. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, Holt said, uh, and only one, he sent them all back except one. He had one that was just a personal bodyguard that stayed with him, and they all went to the woods and wasn't going to see anybody anyway. And Holt said he never did understand that because he was uh, uh, safer with him than he was ever detective in Washington, D.C. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 a little bit cocky, he, he thought he could handle well, I've heard Jesus killing black bear and union officers and all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> yeah. street cred. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, he, he said Teddy Roosevelt liked to talk. And he said better than that, he liked to listen. And he said he constantly asked me questions, uh, you know, about the war and killing bears and all that kind of stuff. He said one day I said, well, sit, uh, could we sit down here? And he said the two of us sat down on a log. And before we left, there's 35 men sitting on that log listening to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he loved to be a wind jammer, you know, get, sure. a, get yeah. an audience. But uh, anyway, they, Teddy was getting uh, impatient. They hadn't seen a bear, hadn't killed a bear. And so Hope grabs his dogs and goes off on his own. And I mean, he, he's not concerned when dark comes. He just kept running dogs uh, night and day until uh, he got a bear. Uh, they bait a bear, and uh, he was going to leave the dogs there and go back and get Teddy uh, uh, to shoot the bear, and uh, uh, before he left, one of his dogs jumped the bear, and a bear hugged him up and killed him. Mm -hmm. Well, that ticked him off. He got a rope. He, he lassoed that bear and ran around the tree two or three times and tied that bear off. <laughs> and so then he goes back and gets Teddy Roosevelt and he says I've got you a bear you're going to see a bear man and so <laughs> could shoot, a, shoot a bear on a rope <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what he thought <laughs> and when they got there uh, Teddy Roosevelt said oh hold I can't do that I can't shoot a tied up bear like that well hold on <laughs> <laughs> yeah let me cut a rope yeah. everybody else will <laughs> But anyway, there was a newspaper man that that uh, stayed with the president, uh, uh, oh, like Leslie Stahl, you know, or somebody sure. who travels mm -hmm. with him, mm -hmm. uh, staying in on everything. Press well, corps. Yeah. This uh, newspaper man, he thought that was so funny. He drew this cartoon of Teddy Roosevelt leading a little bitty tiny baby bear mm -hmm. out there on the ground. 
And he put it in the newspaper, that cartoon he put in the newspaper, and it went over so big that they called it Teddy's Bear. Mm. And that's where the teddy bear originated. Oh, yeah. man. You can still buy them. I was <laughs> about to make the connection and, yep. and didn't know if it was going that way, but sure enough. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, Holt Collier, he's the one that uh, started the teddy bear. Uh, a lot of people made a lot of money making teddy bears, and every kid had one. They'd chew the arm off and stuff like that. But huh. uh, anyway, there is a, down in that area where he hunted with uh, Teddy Roosevelt, there is uh, two 1,500-acre uh, federal preserves, wildlife preserves. One of them is the Hope Collier Preserve, and one of them is the Teddy Roosevelt oh, man. Preserve. They're That's right, cool. Got them right, right beside each other. That's cool. But uh, anyway, uh, that uh, I went to... Uh, all to Vicksburg there and was looking uh, that that trial was held in Vicksburg and I, I talked to uh, 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 George Bubba Blome he's the curator there and uh, he he told me the story about that and, uh, at that Civil War Museum there yeah mm-hmm. yeah the the one at the uh, I, I never heard of a curator called Bubba <laughs> yeah. but he had to be from the uh, south. Mississippi yeah, though. Right. <laughs> he's in the right city yeah <laughs> Any, anyway, uh, old, old Both. Bubba, uh, yeah. he Bubba had never heard of Bob Lee. I just, I just couldn't believe it. I, after I got through crying, I, <laughs> I got that card from him and I mailed him a copy of uh, Murder at the Corners. You can get them over to White Wright Library. Mm-hmm. Back then, it used to be ten dollars, and I'd go in there and give them a hundred dollars worth, and, huh? uh, huh. give them away. And and uh, uh, but I think they're twelve and a half, fifteen now. But anyway, I. Sent Bubba one. Said, Man, you need to. They, he had three different uh, uh, displays there that Bob Lee was connected with, and never no had idea. Lee. Oh, yeah, wow. I didn't know who he was. Had said anything. So, at what point in that time did uh, Bob Lee go back? Come back here? Oh, one after the war. Yeah, just right after the war, he just came back. Yeah, okay. they say he came in late after the war. I don't know what that means. Okay, but he stayed for the entire thing. Okay, so, how did the uh, how did the promotion happen from sergeant to captain? Well, I'm getting to that. Okay. All right. I just want to... <laughs> he was, he was, uh, uh, well liked that a guy from a different army mm-hmm. selected him. And, uh, his name was Harvey, Harvey scouts. And, uh, here, that uh, there's a lot of stuff. I, I just turn in some pages here for you guys, but sure. uh, there was a lot of stuff about the teddy bear and the signs, mm. and, oh, yeah. and uh, there's uh, Holt Collier sitting up on his uh, horse there with his with his uh, bear hounds. Oh, Very sure cool. enough, that's yeah. a cool picture. Yes, it, it is. is. And here's a later life picture of him. He's holding an '86 Winchester. Then, wow. Uh, wow. I mean, you didn't. Have an '86 Winchester, with uh, but the, but I, you might have. Teddy used them. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's the uh, that's the eyes of a man who's seen some things. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Here, here's Teddy. Teddy loved him. Mm-hmm. Wow. There's a picture of him and Teddy together. Huh. And, uh, Interesting aside about uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Anytime he's uh, uh, suffered a personal setback, like losing a presidential election or something, he'd go do something that challenged himself. Uh, interesting book called river of doubt where he goes to south america and uh it's not the amazon but it's another big river down there it almost killed him but he was going down there like surveying it and going down the river he's an interesting cat Mm. yeah here's here's hope (laughs) and there's teddy's hunting buddies no they made some good uh, they they took some real good photos of, of all that and uh uh but uh there's hope collier's uh tombstone he's buried under a company i Texas Cavalry, wow. Confederate cool. States of America. Where's that at? Uh, oh, it's uh, Mississippi. <laughs> I forget where. Okay. Hey, my grandmother was 14 years old when he died. Yeah. He wow. lived a long time. He's 90 years old, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He has seen some things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they... Uh, uh, we'll throw, uh, with your approval, we'll throw a 
a few pictures up on our Facebook page. Oh yeah, that of that good. if you're if you're okay with that. Yeah. So people know what we're what what they're we're, we're looking at right now. No. I th- I think that's uh, <laughs> real interesting. It's real interesting to me that Bob was connected with uh, mm. somebody that went on to become well known like that. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how many uh, raids they worked on, but I know that uh, Bob's were so well thought of that he was actually uh, picked by uh, uh, another uh, captain that was appointed to uh, uh, put up a scout company. And General Red Jackson uh, ordered uh, Addison Harvey, uh, Captain Addison Harvey, of a company to put up a a spy company for him. And uh, scouts, uh, special service uh, services and whatever. But anyway, Captain Addison Harvey had uh, demonstrated a unique capability for uh, and an aptitude for, uh, for handling men and leadership and scouting. And not only that, he knew how to look up and take orders, too. And Bob Lee was the same way. That's why he got where he was. He, he, he could handle his men, and, uh, and he could please the people that brought him there. Sure. But uh, anyway, Captain uh, Addison Har- Harvey had uh, uh, got up a... Uh, uh, scouting team uh, for General Red Jackson, and uh, he picked from uh, General uh, Wirt Adams' regiment of cavalry, mainly Ballantine's cavalry and the 28th uh, Mississippi Infantry, a few of them from there, all but one, Bob Lee. I mean, Bob had done made a big enough uh, uh, name for himself uh, that he was noticed by these people in the same line of work he was in, you know, sure. they just reached over and got him, and, and and then we're led to believe he was a coward and worthless, and it right. it, it just burns me up mm. that that the uh, uh, well, his, the fact that he was even a sergeant uh, shows that he, I mean, he was put in leadership position. You don't get put in leadership position if you don't show some value or worth, yeah. you know. So that I mean, that to me blows that. Argument out and it of was water. right after he got arrested for something. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and, and especially in those days, uh, just getting arrested didn't necessarily hamper your career. They liked some people with a little scrap to well, them. Well, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so. I think so. I think so. But anyway, uh, Captain Harvey uh, was allowed to pick his own men and choose his own officers. And so he just told them, I, I choose First Lieutenant Bob Lee. So there it was. My second in command. And they promoted Bob Lee to first lieutenant or Captain Harvey. Mm -hmm. Uh, And not only that, Captain Harvey had, uh, uh, let's see if I had it written down here. Uh, Yeah, uh, George Harvey and Isaac Harvey were also chosen by. uh, Addison Harvey uh, to be uh, in his uh, scout company. Scout there. company, yeah. But I mean, he picks Bob Lee over his own two brothers. Mm, you know, yeah. to be second in charge. Uh, one of the brothers is uh, uh, the third lieutenant, and the other one is just a private. Right. They were glad to go. And uh, anyway, I think that says a lot for Bob. It says a lot nobody else has said. Sure. And, and I just. Feels good to be able to tell folks that, but um, well, it sounds like most of the Lee Peacock story starts after any of that happened. Yeah, right. I mean, it yes, all starts as he returns home. It does. It does. Uh, uh, but without telling his military career, you miss it because right. because right. of what all was put in print. Right. Well, and it provides the context of who he was and how he uh, handled himself. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it sure does. Am I talking too long? No. No. <laughs> oh, no. I'm doing yeah. good. 
Although we are at about an hour and ten minutes. Uh-oh. An hour, t- we're hour. Yeah, you you weren't sure if you could do it. Uh, yeah, see, we you went you went one ten. Well, I, I didn't know how I'd come out with it, but uh, anyway, we'll see what happens. But uh, it wasn't any time till they were started sending uh, the scouts out, uh, and uh, the first. Uh, uh, Let's see, the, those scouts went in uh, June the 10th, and on June the 14th, uh, they were given a mission, and uh, they uh, uh, were to, to merge with uh, Baker's Texas scouts. These scouting units, uh, they would operate together, or as a, or, or only their own company, or they might have a squad from one group uh, that joined a squad from another group, or the whole thing, as in their first mission, the whole thing right. uh, uh, came out. And they were to strike a railroad between uh, Kingston and uh, Risaka. And uh, the 75 men in all uh, uh, divided into three squads, the the... Bob Lee was in charge of one of them, and the other two uh, had their own companies, and his came right out of the middle there. Uh, he, he got to select them. But uh, they were to operate quietly and catch trains within this area, cut the telegraph lines, and uh, destroy small bridges. Uh, they were to change locations uh, 20 to 30 miles every day or two. Oh, they wow. didn't want anybody knowing where they were because they weren't going to be there. And uh, so they did lots of circling around and going down the railroad track, up the railroad track, up another railroad, and were just never able to uh, get them down. Uh, they, they became Company M of the 1st Mississippi under General Work Adams, uh, Bob said Wirt Adams was his favorite general. I don't know why he said that, but he told he told his uh, uh, great uh, 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 told a grandson that that uh, built that monument for him out there. But um, anyway, uh, they and and then later they became Harvey Scouts, the independent company that that ranged uh, for. Uh, uh, Forest, General Forest, mm. but uh, Harvey Scouts had four distinct kinds of duties. They had Secret Service uh, scouting. That was usually uh, one went out. A lot of times, two went out. And that second man, uh, it, the whole mission stayed on the shoulders of the first man. The second man held the horses while this guy was going in to do whatever he was to do. Sure. And uh, then if he was wounded, that second man was to help him get, get out of there, sure. get, retrieve him, get back uh, fast but quietly and uh, get their information to the, to the captain. And then uh, number uh, two, they had to uh, capture enemy couriers. This was the second most dangerous job any of them had. It was done by very few of them. You had to go in between two army commands and capture or kill uh, so that you could get the messages from the couriers that ranged back and forth from them. They were talking constantly with these guys going back and forth. And uh, Bob and, and, uh, well, all of Harvey Scouts, that was uh, their second deal. And then they had uh, uh, squad scouting. I mentioned that a while ago where they had... uh, uh, go in as a squad, and these first two groups were not to fight at all. They were to keep quiet and get in, get out. And uh, squad scouting was to keep quiet, get in, and get out. But if you had to fight your way out, you might have to do that. That's they were used on those type missions. And then uh, incidental missions was where Captain Harvey he, he usually kept the full company with him, around forty at least. Uh, while the rest of them were out on missions. And uh, 
he would uh, reconnoiter the uh, position of every force that was moving and operating within his range. So if you had a group, of, uh, if you had a, a company of cavalry or, or an entire cavalry or three or four companies or what it was moving, they wanted to know how many was in there and where they were going and uh, uh, what they'd done, where they'd been. And uh, that's what the captain did himself. Hmm. But I found one real interesting thing on uh, uh, Bob Lee uh, on one on one of those Secret Service uh, missions. He he was uh, uh, watching a road, uh, counting the cavalry that came through there, and they knew they were coming through. He was by himself, and uh, he had uh, uh, watched them, counted everybody, and when it all came through. He thought, <laughs> he hopped his cor- horse out in the middle of the road and took a left. You know, they were going, they were going right. Sure. Well, all of a sudden there was a little curve right there. Well, he meets another officer that was doing kind of like he was, that was just trailing his men and looking to see if anything was going on behind them, you know. So anyway, uh, Bob sticks his hand under his overcoat, cocks his pistol, and just rides right up to that officer like nothing's, you know, like their best friends are going to greet each other. Of course, they're wearing different colored coats. And <laughs> so that guy does the same thing. And when he gets pretty close to him, uh, the uh, other one, the other officer, uh, the union officer, jerks his pistol out and says, Surrender. Well, Bob noticed that his hammer wasn't cocked. Mm. <laughs> That's all he needed. That's yeah. all the edge he needed. So he pops this guy off of his horse <laughs> and heads out. Sure. And so. he goes back, you know, and uh, uh, makes his report on uh, what all they had found. And uh, then it was a certain the next day that a detachment of the enemy had passed up the road and found that officer severely wounded mm. laying in a road. So... The little do that. Yeah, you know, I had all these uh, uh, kin folks that were in that war, and you can't find anything on any of them, right? Outside of what's on their military record, but Bob Lee was well known enough that he came from um, uh, every direction with them. I mean, he he just uh, he he was well known by them, and uh, they. Uh, uh, at one point, we found uh, a, a newspaper article uh, that three other newspapers had picked up, and and they called. Uh, this was before he was a lieutenant. This was back when he was with uh, uh, Perry Evans. That <laughs> after some of those raids he made, they referred to him as Colonel. Lee. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, it picked up one paper, picked it up, and then another. But anyway, I don't know how many newspapers ran the article, but sure. he was well known. Sure. He was well known. And all that came home. I mean, people brought newspapers home. Oh, yeah. And yeah. all that. I mean, a newspaper was a valuable thing back then. Yeah, they used to read them for months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And nail them on the wall. So, uh, anyway, uh, those scouts, a scout was usually uh, for anywhere from a couple of weeks to like three months, and that's the reason you don't see those uh, going for long, long terms. Uh, they were put together for a purpose, right. and uh, uh, they normally uh, didn't need a full company of scouts, and then those that uh, were selected by uh, uh, General uh, uh, Forest uh, up in uh, uh, Tennessee, uh, th- he he made them independent scouts. They answered to him to do whatever he wanted done, but independently they were to operate on their own and just do the most damage and raise as much hell they could. Sure, and they were gorillas. Basically. They were yeah. uh, they were our original special forces, right. mm. and they Bob Lee was uh, right in the middle of that. Well-known special forces is what they were. Sure. And uh, I mean, he, he, I love reading those, uh, some of those different uh, tactics that they ran into and, 
uh, whatever, how they pulled off the business. But uh, once after tearing up about 100 yards of uh, railroad track and uh, making a run for it, they, uh, they discovered that uh, Harvey Scouts discovered that there was a Yankee cavalry chasing them. And Harvey instructed Bob uh, Lee to take his squad and draw the attention of the Yankees until he, uh, Harvey, could get make a uh, run near Ringo uh, with the remaining half of the scouts uh, in command. Well, Lieutenant Lee uh, succeeded admirably. He he uh, charged 150 uh, Yankees that was after him, and then and then just dispersed, went in every direction, and uh, they were. I'll put it a halt, chasing them through the woods, one here and one there, and sure. you know they went on, went on down the road, and uh, uh, they uh, decided to tear up some railroad track. I don't know if they, that was at Andersonville, no, uh, Adairsville, and I don't know if they were really going to tear the track up there. It'd been a good thing to do, or if they were just waiting for the uh, rest of them to. Catch them, yeah. <laughs> the 150 that was after them. But anyway, uh, the enemy uh, charged uh, Bob and dispersed his command, uh, uh, wounding uh, one, and, and they captured six or eight of them. And, uh, but Lieutenant Lee and Land, which was the second, uh, Lieutenant Land was the second uh, uh, lieutenant, uh, they, uh, when that charge came through, well, they just s- slipped off to the side and then just jumped right in behind them and uh, started shooting them from the rear, which caused them to change fronts. They spun around and, and came towards them. And uh, so the stampede was uh, complete. Uh, Lieutenant Lee killed uh, three and captured 24 Jeez. on that raid. And... Uh, Captain Harvey and Lieutenant Lee together uh, burned 40 cars, railroad cars, loaded Mm -hmm. with supplies headed for the Union's front. And uh, they tore up track. Uh, Telegraphs were cut in 11 different places. Three bridges were burnt. 17 Federals killed. Five wounded. And uh, 120 captured in all. That was between the two of them on that one raid. Uh, and uh, their loss was three men and five horses wounded and six were captured. Those guys were captured. And uh, there was a, uh, a Mr. A.B. Gardner that was a doctor over here in Denison, Texas, a long time after the war, ran an ad that he was looking for folks who were captured with him from Harvey Scouts. Uh, and uh, this was just prior to him going to New Orleans to a Harvey Scout reunion he was oh, wow. he was wanting to know was any of them around he wanted them to go down to the reunion huh. with him and uh, then a bf quarrels uh, of meridian mississippi we found where he posted a newspaper advertisement also looking for harvey scouts uh, who was captured with him so we know that a couple of those guys you know they lived anyway i don't they may have been sure. some of them that they would have a facebook group right now right yeah they, they probably would <laughs> Uh, I don't know how they got Hashtag loose. Hashtag POW. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they got loose, but those six men that they captured uh, made their getaway. I don't yeah. know if hmm. Lee and them went in and got them. Uh, or uh, we know that happened at one point. Uh, had some captured, and uh, they just went in and took them back. Right. But uh, anyway, these particular guys, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, if they just escaped or, or if they were sprung uh, from the deal, but I don't know. But uh, one day uh, there was uh, 21 scouts of the 3rd Texas Army that met Lieutenant Lee, Bob Lee, uh, out in the woods who had uh, 20 scouts with him. And they decided to spend the day together and go uh, towards the river between Campbellton and uh, Sherman's outpost. Uh, those uh, Harvey scouts, they, they, they uh, pecked at Sherman's rear guard just right and left, 
And uh, they even attacked uh, Sherman from the front. Of course, they hit a vanguard, and uh, I mean, what much that a handful of them could do against no. <laughs> guess a hundred thousand men. Yeah. But uh, I- anyway, it was uh, uh, the thrill of the game. I think. I think that adrenaline was flying, and they just did it. No. That's what I like to do to get my blood up. <laughs> I start fights with much larger forces. <laughs> You versus Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, me versus the new tech people. <laughs> I, I, I was going to learn to box when I was a kid. And uh, uh, I, I had four uh, amateur fights. Well, I, I, I won three of them. But that last guy taught, taught me that I need to figure out something else. Something to else, do. yep. <laughs> Figured out what you didn't want to do your whole life. <laughs> yeah. he, he had had some training. It, it was, I, I weighed about 150. And he, he was a black guy. He was from Dallas, uh, Tisdale. And uh, he weighed about 165, but I, he didn't look too big to me. I mean, I'd won those yep. <laughs> other three. But after he got through, I started hunting a way to get out of yeah. there. <laughs> Six or eight years ago, I took some MMA lessons. And uh, after a few lessons, they put us in the ring. And they said, all right, you're going to go about 60%. Yeah, and uh, r- first right out of the box, uh, guy squared up and just hit me right in the chin, and I, my knees got weak, and I saw stars, and uh, I thought maybe this is not the sport for me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Sound more like no, yeah, ninety percent. <laughs> yeah, it felt like ninety. Anyway, they decided they'd spend the day together, together, and go down between uh, uh, Sherman's uh, outpost and and the town there, Campbellton. Uh, but on the way, they ran into Pim. Jarvis of the Third Texas. Uh, Pim was a uh, out there lost. He, he he had got cut off from his the Third Texas uh, uh, infantry somehow or another, and he had a long gun. But he didn't even own a pistol. They said they introduced us. He introduced himself to him. They said you want to go with us? Well, hell, everybody's desire was to be a scout. Yeah. I mean, they were the ones that made the paper, you know. Right. <clears throat> well, anyway, Pim says, yeah, man. He, he, he. So he hopped on a horse, you know, and he had his gun but no pistol. And uh, they were going down the road looking for this uh, cavalry unit, and they came across these uh, couple of ladies. Uh, they were crying. That that unit had come through there and, and uh, slapped them around called them names and all that, and they were going to the uh, their camp to see if they couldn't get the uh, commander to put a stop to that stuff, coming by our house, treating them that way. And, and so they told them that the 60 federal cavalrymen and uh, two f- uh, four mule wagons were on the road uh, headed towards Campbellton. And uh, so that road split. You could take a river road or the crest road after you, just before you got to town, Campbellton. And uh, so they sent two scouts out to check which road it was. And uh, I don't know if they took one apiece or both of them went down one uh, or, or what, but uh, they, uh, the scouts, uh, Harvey scouts, lined up 20 yards uh, off of the... Uh, uh, road in uh, brush, sitting on their horses, waiting to, you know, for them to see what they found out. And uh, so within two miles of town, uh, um, they, they had set up this this uh, uh, ambush there in case they, they came back by. And uh, sure enough, in due time, here come uh, their two scouts, horses running wide open. And uh, they run right through them, and, uh, of course, they they know the ambush is set up there. Sure. They shoot right through them, and there's two uh, scouts, uh, cavalry scouts, Union cavalry scouts after them, and one of them reined up. He got suspicious there. He got to thinking, this is going too easy, yeah. you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so that second one just trotted on, out, on through there. Well, he just looked so pretty, you know. One of them guys couldn't. He just couldn't contain himself, so he shot him off his horse. Well, that notified the uh, column, uh, Yankee column, that uh, there was an ambush. And before they had time to uh, uh, prepare themselves uh, or anything, uh, the uh, 
scouts just jumped right out in the middle of the road and uh, charged this uh, Yankee column. And uh, the ambush was spoiled, but, uh, you know, they still had the surprise of uh, just jumping out there and coming on. And uh, scouts, they, they spurred them, spurred their horses, gave a big rebel yell, and they charged uh, full speed uh, at the head of their uh, that column. And uh, uh, that column reversed their direction and started to run towards town. Uh, the feds were armed with Spencer rifles. That's what most of those cavalrymen used was uh, uh, carbine. carbines. Yeah, carbine, a sword, and uh, uh, mostly scouts threw the swords away. But uh, uh, they didn't have any pistols, and and that's what these scouts found out. Uh, you know, it's the it's the, it's a revolver fight when you get in a, in a mess like that. And, well, Jarvis that they had picked up <laughs> didn't have a pistol he didn't have a pistol and his horse jumped right into a, a grove of blackjack trees and drug the rifle out of his hand and then that crazy horse uh was all hyped up and spooked and it turned and jumped right in the midst of him, mm. going down the road and here he is without a weapon one, and he's passing some of those guys mm. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway uh, uh, Bob Lee and uh, some of his men fell, uh, put, ran up in them as, as much as they could. And uh, every time that uh, one of those uh, 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 Union cavalrymen would raise an arm to uh, one of their carbines to try to shoot poor old Pim off of his horse, uh, Bob or one of the guys with him would uh, shoot him in the back of the head. Jeez. And they killed several of them like that, huh. just wide open going down the road, and this poor guy without a gun won. <laughs> I think I think the fact that uh, Pim Jarvis was lost when they found him, <laughs> it was some foreshadowing right. to his he, antics during the raid. He yeah. should have stayed lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, he had a he had a grain horse that was hopping everything, you know, and they sure. just uh, fell right in behind him. But anyway, they. Uh, uh, the scouts had wound up with 12 uh, un unwounded prisoners, 15 prisoners that were wounded, 14 dead feds, uh, one wagon and team, and uh, 30 or 40 rifles, and uh, uh, a few pistols and a, a number of horses with all their rigging. They didn't get the other wagon. There was a bunch of them ran plumb through Campbellton, uh with, rather than stopping in town, they ran plumb through with the... Uh, uh, that wagon and got it way out the other side. Well, uh, the scouts did not want to divide their sure. forces. I mean, they're down there trying to see where everybody else is, and they, you know, they they've done created all the commotion they could, so they turned around, and got out of there. Hmm. Uh, while they were working in Tennessee, there for General Forrest, I had a I I. I you know, I told you guys that I'm always getting somebody to, uh, cause I wrote a Facebook ad or, or post or something. I sure. get people call and ask me stuff all the time. But anyway, I had a guy, uh, call me and, and said, uh, what do I know about Bob Lee? And I said, well, a little bit, not much. And, <laughs> and, uh, anyway, he, uh, he, uh, uh, had, on, had bought some land several years ago. And it was right there uh, where Bob Lee had been. And uh, he found a rock. He found a rock that says Bob Lee on it. Really? No way. <laughs> yeah, up there in Tennessee. Look at oh, that. Wow. And, uh, yeah. And uh, anyway, he, he drew me a, a, a map here and showed me where the rock was. Huh. And it's overlooking this railroad that went through a tunnel and that tunnel was important to the union and it was important to the Confederates. Sure. It's according to who was winning as to whether or not the other bunch was going to blow it up to keep. He's everybody. an old graffiti guy. Yeah. So Bob <laughs> just sitting up there with his bunch, uh, you know, on the side of the hill and, uh, he gets, he, he, uh, 
gets his bowie knife or whatever he did, and, and he writes Bob Lee on a rock. Man, mm-hmm. that's crazy. And uh, so this guy uh, had read, uh, he, he just kept Googling Bob Lee, and he found some little old article or something I'd written. And he contacted me, and uh, what's so good about it is there is a spring that runs right beside that rock. There's his son standing mm-hmm. on a, an old cistern that was put in years later. And look at that spring. Man, mm-hmm. it's just bubbling down through there. Huh. I mean, horses. This was you said property owned by Bob Lee. No, no, no this fellow bought the property, and it and the rock was on it. Gotcha. Okay. It, yeah, but he believes that that was one of Bob Lee's uh, sites that they camped at for yeah, a while. Makes sure. sense. And I and I think it is too. I mean, it's right there where he was near uh, the railroad. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, uh, he was either to blow the railroad up or guard the railroad. It's according to who, which direction the traffic was going. Sure. And um, anyway, I don't think they ever blew it up. But uh, that spring coming off that hill was right beside where that rock was. Mm. And uh, I mean, that's enough water to water uh, all those horses and men sure. too mm-hmm. that were up there on the side of that hill. But uh, uh, he found another one and there another rock, and it had. Uh, some stuff in it that I couldn't get, uh, couldn't tell what it, what it was. It looked like this said Lee something or other on it, but really couldn't tell. Oh, uh, yeah. And sure. uh, uh, then this one here was this some of his scouts that put their initials on a rock. Oh, wow. yeah. These two rocks were side by side up there. No way. That's cool. And uh, he had a newspaper article. I didn't get it from him. I guess I should have. They were calling these uh, scouts uh, outlaws, and uh, they those independent scouts. I mean, they didn't have to wear uniforms mm-hmm. or anything, and uh, and they really really were outlaws. I guess they weren't in uniform, but uh, uh, I think that's probably pretty much why they looked at them back then. They were outlaws, sure. and, and and there again, it's according to who owned the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but. Uh, Anyway, they had uh, uh, quite a bit there, but uh, uh, Lee and uh, 9th Brigade fought fought General Sherman's army. Uh, This is before they went back up into uh, uh, Tennessee, but they fought the army uh, for 100 days. Uh, the uh, they delayed the march towards Atlanta, but you know one reason that uh, uh, Sherman said that he laid so much waste to to everything on that march to the sea. Of course, Lincoln told him to, and Grant told him to, but uh, and he loved it. Is they got a letter, letter that his wife wrote. She said, "Kill them all. Uh, they'll learn from that." Um, uh, anyway, he, uh, uh, said that one reason that, that scorched earth approach was taken is because these, uh, damn ribs down here can't figure out they're whipped. Right. And, uh, I mean, he knew he'd whipped them for 18 months, but they hadn't decided they were through. Right. And they just kept raising up one more, you know, and, uh, uh, so that's what they, what they had. They. They uh, uh, stopped his raids, and but it's all at great loss. Uh, when Atlanta fell, uh, and the ninth was to go back up to Tennessee, well, uh, there was only 140 men left out of a thousand. Jeez. So they were pretty wore out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, out of the original thousand, but they, then they served as his uh, uh, independent scouts and. Uh, he had four sets of independent scouts, and uh, Captain uh, uh, Joseph T. Cobb, uh, Addison Harvey, Thomas Henderson, and Thomas N. Knight, uh, Kaiser. And uh, I know that uh, Bob Lee was with Addison Harvey Scouts. I believe he was with Cobb, Cobb Scouts for a while. And uh, I know the two merged. They ran into each other in the woods one time and uh, they merged and sure. did, did some deals together but uh, anyway uh, captain harvey uh 
uh, was assassinated April the 19th, 1865. Uh, well, he had always said around the campfire, I do not want to outlive the Confederacy. And no problem. Sure enough, he didn't, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know uh, Wish uh, granted. Uh, April the 9th is uh, when Lee surrendered, wasn't it? I believe. Mm-hmm. 1865, April, yeah, and uh, he was assassinated on the 19th. But what had happened, they had, uh, uh, they were in t- in one of those little towns there, and he had uh, come down the street and caught a uh, civilian, I think they later decided he was a deserter, uh, stealing one of their horses. And so he stopped the man and told the sergeant put him under arrest well the guy went to cussing uh harvey well harvey's kind of short tempered after four years of that stuff <laughs> so he takes his revolver and he just knocks him to the ground with it and uh but uh that guy later escaped his guard uh somehow or another and he got a, another pistol and snuck up behind addison harvey and just executed him shot him in the back of the head mm. And I'd have probably just left well enough alone and got out of Dodge. Yeah, you know. Well, uh, yeah, well, they, they did. They did things different back then. <laughs> well, you know why it hurts a bunch. Yeah, they kept knocking people in the head, and those people kept shooting at them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a different bunch. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that uh, uh, I trace Bob Lee as a first lieutenant. The next. Uh, thing he could or would have been uh, up the ladder would have been a captain. Right. When Addison Harvey was uh, assassinated, did that make him captain? Right. In that group. Sure. And uh, was he promoted uh, or did he leave the scouts uh, and become captain of his uh, own squad? Uh, The bottom paper said, uh, I know of where I speak, uh, Bob Lee was a captain of uh, scouts with Forrest. Well, uh, then you got Parson John Gentry. Uh, when he was interviewed by Judge L. L. Bowman, he said that uh, at the close of the war, Bob was with Forrest and was one of his scouts, an independent scout. Yeah. So that could be taken to mean he has his own command. Uh, well, that's what I thought. Yeah. And uh, but I've never seen anything that called him a captain outside of that one little notice in the bottom paper, and then his grandson putting that on his uh, tombstone out mm-hmm. there. But uh, Harvey Scouts uh, were surrendered uh, by Third Lieutenant George Harvey. Well, Bob was no longer with them, but he was still on the roll. As the first lieutenant. I mean, they hadn't marked him off. Sure. But uh, uh, then uh, Lieutenant Land, that was in a couple of these uh, raids with Bob, uh, he had gotten killed. And so the third in command surrendered him. Well, it's fourth in command, I guess, after you get past Harvey, uh, Captain Harvey. Anyway, he surrendered him, and uh, first lieutenant Bob was uh, not surrendered with them. Uh, but where was he in what role? And, uh, of course, help, where's Bob Lee? Right. You know, I don't know Captain Bob Lee I'm looking for. I never found anything uh, of any kind of military value or anything that had. Uh, sure. Uh, Things were fluid then, though. I mean, like we've seen. I mean, just how you went Yeah. over this. Well, he, he uh, it could have been a field commission. Right. From anybody higher than him. Right. As they rode by, you're a captain. You know, yeah. it could have been a field commission. It could be that uh, he was considered a captain because he took over uh, the scouts, but yet when the scouts surrendered, he wasn't in it. And he did not surrender. Yeah. But he damn sure wasn't hiding mm. from anybody. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you pick any uh, private you want to and start looking outside of forest and uh, start looking at, you know, you just don't find anything on them. Sure. And uh, but anyway, that's uh, kind of what I've got on Bob Lee. I was. Well, I think that's a that's a good segue here. Um, that kind of concludes our first 
first part of this. Yeah, that wraps up the Bob Lee section. Gives yeah. us a lot of backstory on him. Yeah, that's interesting. Sets us up for the feud itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, uh, if, you, if you'd like to join us for the second part of that, we'd like to have you back. Okay, I'd love to. Yeah. I, I, we need to get it out. Yeah, yeah no, I, that's I, what we're trying to do. I want it out because so much uh, lies have been told about it, and uh, and they sensationalize stuff. Mm. You know, sure. about uh, all these folks put in there that they were just uh, running amok killing black folks. They didn't do it. Right. They've got no no proof of that anywhere. Mm. And uh, But, you know, they wrote a book. Well, yeah, yeah. and it, it sounds, you know, it, like you said, sensationalizes things. So Yeah. Well, that's a good place to stop. Uh, Ronnie, thank you very much for coming in and uh, and sharing with, uh, with us some of your research. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming, and maybe uh, we'll do this. Uh, we'll get it scheduled for next week. We'll oh. wait, no, I, <laughs> I, I can't get this fast. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> we'll we'll probably need some time for for you to recoup and yeah, for me to decide what to put together. And yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 He's got he's got a little work to do, I guess. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we'll we'll get back to you, and I'll I'll be in touch with you. Okay. To uh to get something else together, but that was awesome. It was awesome. And uh, we we appreciate you coming on and sharing. Okay. Thank Thank you, you. Mr. Ronnie Atnip. Thanks, everybody.